So in this video, we're going to cover activity 3-1, looking at microscopy. So if we look at our compound light microscope, there are several parts that you should be familiar with. We have our ocular lens. Ocular refers to eyes. These are the eyepieces that we look in. And they also have a lens in them. And on our microscopes, this will magnify an image 10x what we see with our naked eye. Down here, this is the revolving nose piece. This can rotate and switch the objective lens. So these lenses down here, these are our objective lenses. We have on our microscopes a 4X, which has a red ring, a 10X, which has the yellow, the 40X is the blue, and the white one that you can't see right now that's behind, that is the 100X lens. And so those are the objective lenses and that is going to move on the revolving nose piece. This black platform here, this is referred to as the stage, and this is where we're gonna put the slide. So we put our slide here in the stage clips. We have underneath the stage, this is what's called the condenser, and you're gonna see that the job of the condenser is to gather and focus the light up and into the specimen. So the lamp is down here. This is where the light source is going to be. The light's going to come up. The condenser is going to gather and focus the light onto the specimen. On the condenser is a little lever that is called the iris diaphragm. And the iris diaphragm can open and close. And basically it controls the amount of light that exits the condenser. We have the base of the microscope. We have these mechanical stage adjustment knobs. One set of knobs moves the stage left and right, and one set of knobs moves it front and back. And so these are going to be your mechanical stage adjustment knobs. We have our focus knobs, this big one here. This is our coarse focus knob. That is going to move the stage up and down relatively quickly, whereas the fine focus is gonna move the stage up and down very slowly. And we use this fine focus to fine tune or to basically just help us to get it into better focus once we find it with the coarse focus. We have our light intensity knob, what is also referred to as the rheostat. And then our microscopes have our on off switch. And so these are the various parts of the microscope that you need to be familiar with. So now let's talk about how much our lenses are going to magnify our image. So when we're calculating our total magnification, the way that we calculate it is that we take the objective magnification, so the amount that the objective lens magnifies the image, and we times the ocular magnification. That will give us our total magnification. So our smallest lens is called the scanning lens. That's because this lens is the lowest power, meaning it's the most zoomed out. And so we always want to start with our scanning lens because this allows us to see a greater field of view, meaning we can see a bigger area, which makes it easier to find our specimen. Our scanning lens is a 4x objective. So again, that is the smallest one. So it's going to magnify the image four times. The ocular lens, so the eyepieces, are going to magnify an image 10 times. And that's going to be consistent all the way through. It, the ocular lens always magnifies 10 times. So our total magnification when using the scanning lens, 4 times 10, it's going to be 40x. So that will magnify our image 40x. Now, the next biggest lens is referred to as the low power lens. And the low power lens has an objective magnification of 10x. That 10x is going to be used with the 10x ocular for a total magnification of 100x. The next lens is what we call a high dry lens. We call it a high dry because it's high power, but it's dry because it doesn't use immersion oil, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So the high dry lens has to be kept dry. It cannot get oil in it. Our high dry magnification is going to be 40x. So that lens is an objective magnification of 40x. The ocular is going to still be 10x. 
the total magnification then 40 times 10, 400X. Our last lens that's on our microscope is our oil immersion lens. And this is our highest power lens. And in this lens, the reason it's called oil immersion is because we have to use immersion oil. And we'll talk about the purpose of that in just a minute. The oil immersion lens has an objective magnification of 100X. The ocular is still 10, so our total magnification is 1000X. So using that highest power lens on our microscope, it is able to magnify an image a thousand times what we see with the naked eye. And so that's the highest that these particular microscopes go to. When you would be looking at bacteria throughout the semester, bacteria are extremely small. You would almost always use your oil immersion lens. You would have to use your oil lens because the bacteria are so small. And so you'll learn about size of bacteria in lecture. So we want to make sure that we start with the light intensity all the way down before turning on the microscope. And once we have made sure that it's all the way down, then we can turn the switch on. Now what you can see is that there's a little bit of light coming up. So we need to increase our light intensity to about a four. And now we can see more light. So these are the objective lenses. There's the 10X, which is the yellow. The 40X is the blue and the 100X is the white. We wanna start with our scanning lens in place, our 4X objective. So we snap that into place, and we're gonna use our letter E slide, and notice that the letter E is gonna be facing right side up when we put it on the stage. So I put it in the stage clips, and you can see that it's resting nicely within the stage clips. And now I need to use the stage adjustment knobs and you can see that one of them moves the stage front and back, one of them moves them side to side, and I need to center my E right over the light. And so I'm going to center it right over where the light is coming up. So once the specimen is centered over the light, then you're gonna use the coarse focus, which is the larger of the two knobs, and you're gonna raise the stage all the way to the top. The reason is it's a lot faster to find what you're looking for when you start at the top. So now I'm gonna look in the eyepieces and look at the specimen and lower the stage with the coarse focus. Then I'm gonna switch to the fine focus to fine tune the image. I'm going to get it into clear focus. Now, once I can see my specimen, I'm gonna use the stage adjustment knobs and I'm going to center my E in the middle of my field of view. That way I can see it in the middle. So this is what we would see at the 40X total magnification. Notice the orientation of the E. While it was normal upright when I first looked, it's now upside down and backwards. So now I'm going to just again make sure that my specimen is centered. And then I'm going to use the revolving nose piece and I'm going to rotate the 10X objective into place. So my 10X objective is gonna be snapped into place. And once I do that, I don't wanna use the coarse focus. That will move the stage too much. I'm gonna use the fine focus, look in the microscope, and use the fine focus to refocus what I'm looking at. And so I'm gonna get it into perfect focus. And then I'm going to use the stage adjustment knobs and recenter the E in the middle of our field of view. So when I'm at 100X magnification, notice that my E is much larger. It now occupies the greater field of view because we are now zoomed in, right? So as I went up in magnification, now my E is bigger and my field of view is smaller. So now I'm going to rotate in the 40X objective into place, and I'm gonna to continue to go up in my magnification. Now notice that my lens gets a lot closer to my slide. So I only wanna use the fine focus to fine tune my adjustments. I'm looking in the eyepiece and I'm using the fine focus to readjust the focus. 
So once I have my specimen in focus, one of the things that's going to change is that the light intensity decreases as I go up in magnification. I'll describe why in a minute. So I'm going to adjust the rheostat, the light intensity knob, and I'm gonna turn up the light just a little bit to allow more light to go through the sample. There's another way that I can adjust the light intensity, and that is that under the stage, there's that black ring that you can see, that's the condenser. And on the condenser is going to be an iris diaphragm. It's a little lever that controls the amount of light that exits the condenser. And so I can adjust the iris diaphragm to let more light in. And so this is what I would see. Notice I don't see the whole E because I am so zoomed in that now I'm only seeing a part of the E. I can see a lot greater resolution. I can see a lot more detail in the ink in the E. But again, when I went up in magnification, I'm now very zoomed in. Now I'm gonna go to my oil immersion lens. And to do that, the lens is so large that I need to put immersion oil on my slide. So I toggle in between my two lenses and I'm going to get my oil immersion out and I'm gonna put a drop of it on the slide. When I put it on the slide, I'm then going to rotate the 100X objective into place. Once there's oil on the slide, you may not go back to the 40X because the 40X would be too close and you can't get oil in the 40X. Remember that it's a high dry lens. So here I go, I'm going to rotate the 100X objective into place. So I'm moving it using the revolving nose piece. And when it clicks into place, then I'm going to look in the eyepiece. I'm going to use only the fine focus because I am so close to the slide. And I'm going to use that fine focus to adjust my image so that now I can see my letter E even more up close. And so I'm just making these adjustments and finding my letter E. These microscopes are parfocal. They should stay roughly in focus as we go up in magnification, which is why you don't need to adjust the coarse focus, only the fine focus. So this is what you're gonna see if you look at it with a thousand X total magnification. Notice I can't even see the whole middle part of the E. I am so zoomed in that I see only a very small portion. And I'm again seeing more detail in the ink. So now I'm gonna go over what I did in the video so that you can see the steps to view your slide. So what I did was I went ahead and I put my slide on my stage and then I used the stage adjustment knobs to basically center the E over the light so that the light is coming up from the bottom and it's gonna pass through my specimen. I wanna make sure that I start with the lowest objective lens in place. So this picture has the blue one in place. That is not how you would start. You would wanna make sure that the 4X objective is put back into place. This nose piece is the rotating disc that holds or switches the objective lens. That's its purpose. It's gonna be used to rotate the objective lens. So what I did was I used the coarse focus, that's this larger knob, and I moved the stage all the way up. Because again, if I start at the top and then I lower the stage, it's going to be much faster to find my specimen than if I were to start at the bottom and work my way up. So I, without looking in my microscope, I just simply use the coarse focus and raise the stage all the way to the top. You can adjust the width of the eyepieces. So these are your ocular lenses. So you can move these ocular lenses to basically have the correct spacing between your eyes because everybody has a different distance between your eyes. And so for some of you, your eyes might be set a little more narrow and you'd have to move these eyepieces closer together. Other people have eyes that are a little more wide set. They would have to move the ocular lenses out. Basically, when you're using your ocular lenses, you want to make sure that when you look into the ocular lens that you're only seeing one image. If you're having a difficult time focusing when you're looking in both um, ocular lenses, that means that the spacing is not right. And you want to adjust that because if you try to look at it where you're seeing a double vision, 
you're going to get a headache and you're going to start to kind of go to one side or the other, only use one eye in the eyepiece. And that just means that you don't have proper spacing between the ocular lenses. Then you're going to look in your microscope. And while looking in the microscope, you're going to use the coarse focus. Again, that's the bigger one that's closer to the base. You're going to use the coarse focus and you're going to lower the stage until you can see the letter E in your ocular lenses. So that means that while you're looking in the microscope, you're using your coarse focus to basically start to lower the stage until you see the specimen. Once you begin to see the specimen, then you're going to go to your fine focus knob. And so that's going to be the smaller knob here and you're gonna use that to fine tune the image. And so the fine focus is used to get it into clear focus. The coarse focus is gonna move the stage up and down very quickly, where the fine focus is gonna move the stage up and down much more slowly. So we start with the coarse focus and then we fine tune the image using the fine focus. So question for you, what happens to the orientation of the letter E as you view it through the microscope. So you might recall that when I put the letter E slide on the microscope, the E was right side up. So when I was looking at it just on the microscope, not through the eyepieces, it looked like the letter E. However, notice what would happen with the light. So here is the light. It's gonna pass through a condenser. The condenser is going to gather and focus the light and that is going to invert the image. Then you have an objective lens and an ocular lens, which is again going to distort or invert the image so that when you look at that E in the microscope, it does not appear the same as it is on the slide. So it's going to look different on the slide than what you look at in the microscope. And that's because of this compound light microscope. There are two lenses and so they're going to invert the image. And so let's take a look at what that looked like. So on the slide, it looks like this. So with the naked eye, it looks like a regular E. However, notice when I had the 40X objective, look at the way my E is oriented. Not only is it inverted vertically, but also horizontally. So it's upside down and backwards. And so you can see that it is going to invert the image. And so one thing when you're looking at a microscope and you're looking at a specimen, you have to think that what you're looking at is actually inverted for what is on the actual slide. So it's inverted and it's backwards. This is what I saw when I did this at 40x. Notice when I went to 100x, I am having a higher magnification. So again, it's like if you use your phone and you zoom in on your screen, right? You pinch out to basically zoom in. Notice that your field of view gets smaller. My area is not as big. I'm so zoomed in that I'm only focusing on one part. That is why when you start to find a specimen, you want to start at the lowest magnification because the lowest magnification is going to give you the greatest field of view. It's going to be easier to find your specimen when you're at this lower magnification. And so this is why we start with the scanning lens, which is going to give us a total magnification of 40x. So when we get to 100, again, notice that we are zoomed in. And so we're only seeing the letter E. We're not seeing anything else on that slide. When I went to 400X total magnification, notice that instead of seeing the entire E, I'm only seeing one portion. I'm only seeing this horizontal part right here. Because again, I am so zoomed in, my field of view is getting even smaller. If I look at the 1000X, that was the one that required the immersion oil. It's so zoomed in, I don't even see the entire uh, line here. I can only see one part because it's so zoomed in. And so the magnification is so high that my field of view is even smaller. So when we go up in magnification, 
there are a couple things that have to happen. So we found our image using the scanning lens, and then we would go from our 4X objective, and we would rotate the revolving nose piece, and we would rotate to the 10X lens. And so we would rotate to the 10X. We only use the fine focus to get into focus because as we increase in magnification, notice that the lens size gets bigger. The lens gets bigger so it gets closer to the slide. So I don't wanna use the coarse focus because the slide is getting very close to the lens. And if I use the coarse focus and I move it too fast, it might move so fast that it could potentially snap the slide or worse, snap the lens. So when we go up in magnification, we only use our fine focus. These microscopes that we use for micro, our microscopes are what we call parfocal. That means that the microscope stays approximately in focus when switching between objectives. And so when we switch and we go up in magnification, you should only have to move the fine focus. You shouldn't need to touch the coarse focus because it should stay roughly in focus as we go up in magnification. So let's review what happens as we go up in magnification. So as magnification increases, what happens to the working distance, the distance between the lens and the slide? And so again, here is our 4X objective, here is the 10, here is the 40. So notice that as we go up in magnification, our lens is going to get larger, right? Because it's a bigger lens if it's gonna magnify more. So if it is a bigger lens, that means the distance between the slide and the lens becomes very small. So as we go up in magnification, our working distance goes down, meaning the distance between the slide and the lens gets lower. And so again, that is why when we go up in magnification, we only wanna use our fine focus because now our lens is getting really close to the slide. Next we have as magnification increases, what happens to the light intensity? So what we have to think about is that light is gonna come from the bottom and when it hits the glass where the slide is, it's gonna cause the light to diffract. Now, if the lens itself is smaller, so if this lens is smaller, more of that light gets funneled up and into this lens. On the other hand, if my lens is very large, notice that a lot of the light, because you have to remember it's down here, a lot of the light is not being funneled into this lens. Because it's so close to the slide, most of the light is actually not getting into the lens. So what that means is that as magnification increases, light intensity decreases, right? Because not enough light is getting into the lens. And so that is why you have to adjust the light intensity as you begin to go up in magnification. And then lastly, as magnification increases, what happens to the size of your field of view? So again, if I compare what I saw in the 40X total magnification versus the 100X, you can see that the 40X at a lower magnification, my field of view is much larger. As I go up in magnification, again, as I'm magnifying that image, you can think of it like zooming in, my field of view is now smaller. I don't see that great of an area. I'm now zoomed in on a particular part. And so as magnification increases, the size of the field of view is going to decrease. So again, this is why when we go up in magnification, we don't wanna start at a high magnification because we would be so zoomed in that it would be more difficult to find your specimen. So when we're looking for and we're trying to find our specimen on the slide, we start with the scanning lens, the lowest power lens, that 4X lens, because our field of view is gonna be the greatest. Notice that we can see a lot more area when we're zoomed out than we can if we go up in magnification. And so notice something that you can see here. 
all of these things are inversely related, meaning that as magnification goes up, working distance goes down. As magnification goes up, light intensity goes down. As magnification goes up, our size of field of view goes down. So they're inversely related. As one goes up, the other goes down. And that's true for all of these things. And so this will influence the way that you use your microscope. Because if we go up in magnification, when our working distance gets small, we only want to use our fine focus because the lens is now very close to the slide. As we go up in magnification, our light intensity is going to decrease. So we need to make adjustments to the light to allow more light to get into the lens. And then lastly, as our magnification goes up, our size of field of view goes down because again, we are zooming in. So there are several ways to adjust the light intensity. One is going to be the rheostat, which is also known as this light intensity knob. It's like a dimmer switch. It's going to control the amount of light that comes out of the lamp. That is the most simple way to make an adjustment in terms of the light intensity. Now, under the stage, we have this black ring. And that black ring is referred to as the condenser. The condenser's job is to gather and focus the light to illuminate the specimen. So its job is to condense the light. So it's going to condense it and try and funnel the light through the specimen. When we are working with this, we want the condenser to be up high. We don't want it to be too far away from the stage. And in a minute, I'll show you a picture of how you would adjust your condenser. You would want to adjust your light intensity knob so you could turn your rheostat to four, or if it's already at four, maybe you're gonna turn it to five. You're gonna increase the light intensity at the rheostat. And you can open the iris diaphragm. So again, that's gonna be this little lever on the condenser. And its job is that it's going to control the amount of light that exits the condenser or essentially illuminates the specimen. It's basically going to control how much light leaves the condenser. If it's open, a lot of light is going to pass through. If you close the iris diaphragm, not a lot of light is going to pass through. And so it's going to be darker in appearance. Now you might wonder, well, why would you ever close the iris diaphragm? Why not just leave it open all the time so that the most light can get through? The answer is, is that if you're using specimens that are very faint, for example, if we're using a blood smear, red blood cells can appear quite faint on a slide. And if that specimen is very faint, it sometimes can be difficult to find because the image is so washed out, meaning what's on the slide is not very pigmented. And so in that case, if you close the iris diaphragm a little bit, so if you have a specimen that doesn't have a lot of contrast, if you close the iris diaphragm, it's going to give you more contrast in that image and it's gonna be easier to find it. So there is a reason why we might want to close the iris diaphragm in certain instances, because again, it's going to, when it darkens the image, you get a little more contrast, which makes it easier to see those faint specimens. But if you're not getting enough light, well then you're gonna open the iris diaphragm so that maximum amount of light can get onto the slide. So this is just showing you how you can adjust these parts on the microscope. So again, this little black ring here, this is our condenser. This is the iris diaphragm. So it's right here and it goes back and forth to control if it is open or close. So we can adjust the light intensity with the iris diaphragm. The other way that we can adjust the light intensity is by this condenser knob. So this is on the left-hand side of the microscope. Here's your condenser. This little knob is going to control if the condenser is up or down. And so we want it to be up when we do this. And so if you're not getting a lot of light, one of the things that you can check is you can check this condenser knob to make sure that the condenser is up and underneath the stage. And if not, you want to adjust that so that the condenser is going to be up. 
Notice that the lamp, this is the lamp, you can see the light coming up from the bottom. So the light is gonna come from the lamp, it's gonna go into the condenser, the condenser is going to gather and focus the light, the iris diaphragm is gonna control how much light exits the condenser, and it's going to illuminate the specimen. So I wanna to describe to you why we use immersion oil. So notice when we went to the 100X, we had to add immersion oil. And that's because, remember, that as we go up in magnification, our light intensity decreases. And so the reason for that is going to be that when the light is gonna come from the lamp and through the condenser, the condenser is gonna gather and focus the light through the specimen. When it hits the glass, it's gonna cause the light to diffract. It's gonna cause the light to scatter. Now, again, when this lens gets really large and it gets very close to the slide, most of the light does not get up and into the lens. A lot of the light is lost because of diffraction. And so what has to happen is the reason that we use the immersion oil is because that slide is so close to that 100X lens that we use this immersion oil because the oil has an index of refraction that is similar to glass. So what that does is it makes it so that the light doesn't refract as much. It doesn't move out as much. It helps to draw the light up and into um, the lens. And so this helps to basically focus the light through the lens. It helps get the light and funnel the light up and into that lens because when we go up to that 100X objective, that lens is so close to that slide. And so you always wanna keep in mind that when you go up in magnification, again, you don't adjust the coarse focus. The coarse focus, remember, is gonna move the stage very rapidly. And if the slide is getting too close to the lens and you adjust the coarse focus, you could snap the slide or worse, you could snap the lens. And so when we go up in magnification, we don't want to use the coarse focus. We only want to use the fine focus. And the other key point for this is that once you have oil on your slide, you are not allowed to go back to the 40X lens. That 40X lens, remember that's your high dry lens, and that 40X lens is gonna be very close to the slide. If you can't find it with the 100X lens, you're not gonna backtrack to the 40, because the 40 is gonna be so close that the oil is gonna get in that 40X lens. That 40X lens is not designed to have oil on it. It damages the lens. And so what I typically tell students, if they're having a difficult time focusing using their 40X lens, that nine out of 10 times, the reason they can't focus with their 40X is because somebody before them got oil in that lens. And if there's oil in that lens, it's going to make it difficult to focus. And so I would tell students, you know, you really need to clean that lens well in order to, in order to make sure that that oil is not affecting that lens. And so that's why we would have to make sure that we don't get immersion oil on the 40X lens because it's not good for that lens. The, that lens is not meant to have oil in it. If it has oil on it, you have to clean it well to get rid of the oil or you won't be able to focus. And so if you guys were using your microscopes in lab, and let's say you went to your 100 and you couldn't find your specimen anymore, what you would do is you wouldn't backtrack to the 40X objective. Instead, if you notice on the microscope when it goes in a circle, basically, the lens on the other side of the 100 is going to be the scanning lens, the 4X. So instead, you would go back to the 4X, find what you're looking for, make sure to center your specimen. That is the biggest way that students lose what they were looking at, is that if you don't recenter what you're looking at, remember that you're zooming in. So if it's not centered and you zoom in, 
you're no longer looking at the specimen. The specimen gets lost when you zoom in. So we have to make sure that we recenter our image when we go up in magnification. And so in this case, if we couldn't find it at the 100, instead of going to the 40, we go back to the four, we go the other way so that the 40X lens doesn't go through the oil. We find it with the 4X, and again, because our microscopes are parfocal, they should stay roughly in focus as we go up in magnification. Once you find it with the 4X, you could then go straight back to the 100X rather than go to the 10X, to the 40, and then the 100. You could find it, once you've already found it, find it with the 4, and then go to the 100 if there's already oil on the slide. Because again, you never want to put the 40X lens into the immersion oil. It's not good for that lens. It's not designed to have oil in it. And oil is going to damage that high dry lens. So to put the microscope away, you're going to start by taking the slide off of the stage. So you rotate the smallest lens in place, the 4X lens and then go ahead and remove the slide from the stage. You wanna make sure that the stage is not hanging over in any one direction. You want it to be flush so that it doesn't get knocked. And you also wanna make sure that the stage clips are not off to one side. So you want it all to be lined up so that nothing is hanging over in any one direction. After you do that, you want to turn your light intensity down and after you turn your light intensity down, then you will go ahead and turn off your microscope. You want to turn down your light intensity before you turn off your microscope so that when you go to put it away, if somebody were to plug it in, that the lamp doesn't come on. Because if the lamp were to come on, it could blow a fuse. You then wrap the cord around the back of the microscope and then you would put your microscope away in the cabinet. And that concludes this lab.